Hi and welcome to the second video in my series on Fantasy Star Online 2. In this video I'll be taking a quick look at the Ranger class, um, which primarily uses firearms. If you want to have a look at the Mage class in the game, I did cover force in my previous video, so you might want to check that out if you haven't already. So, I'm not going to go over the basics of the game, because I have covered that in my previous video, so this one will just be focused on the playstyle of Ranger, just to show off how it plays, the different weapons it uses, and how it differs from other classes. So, with Ranger, you have a few weapons you can use. As you can see, at the minute I'm using, it looks like a sniper rifle, but that's actually one of the rare weapons, it just looks like that. Um, it's actually treated as an assault rifle. Um, the way this shoots is it shoots in bursts of three, like this. And as you can see, after your ninth shot, you do a quick reload animation. Um, you can actually get around that by shooting twice. And then stopping for a little bit and then shooting again. But the reload animation is quite fast, so I've never really found the need to do that. And then we also have grenade launchers. This is more one of the comical weapons in the game. Um, it's just one of the signature enemies of Fantasy Star, a rappy. Just stuffed in a barrel and we just fire them out the barrel for our launcher. But the normal launchers do look a lot more generic than this and look more like weapons rather than jokes. So with grenade launcher it shoots just one shot at a time like this. And as you can see it explodes once it gets so far so it does do AOE damage. Um, as far as Fortin arts go, each weapon for both Hunter and for Ranger have things called Photon Arts, which you might be familiar with from Fantasy Star Universe if you've played that. Um, basically these are like skills we can use, they do deplete our PP, which is in the bottom left, but they're very very useful. So for Assault Rifle, I have, at the minute I have an ability called One Point, which is effectively going full auto. So this is um, One Point. So as you can see, it fired a lot more bullets than the regular attacks, but it has drained my PP. And then we've also got um, loads of different PAs as well. Like we have one that shoots in a sort of um, close range salvo, a bit like a shotgun. And then we have another one which allows us to do effectively a sniper shot. And with that Fortnite, you can actually hold the button and actually crawl around in sniper mode. And then release the button to fire. With Ranger as well, we do also have um, a new skill as well called Weak Bullet. What Weak Bullet does is, when you activate it, it loads Weak Bullets into your gun. And you'll shoot one at a time, as you can see. Yeah. And what happens is, if you hit an enemy with Weak Bullet, it'll put a red target on them. And while that target's on them, they'll take massively increased damage. So it's good for using on enemies like some bosses where they have weak points because you can put weak bullet on their weak point and then everyone can attack that and destroy the weak point really quickly. It's a really really good skill um, although I do expect it to get toned down in the future because I think it is a bit too good at the moment. Uh, Ranger can also use the gun slash weapon. I don't actually have one with me at the moment because I don't think it really suits the class very well but gun slash is basically a gun blade and um, you can use it as a melee weapon but you can also switch it to a gun mode and shoot like that um, and every class in the game can use gun slash so I think what I'll do now is just jump into another mission and just show off a bit of what range is about and just how you use it in different situations The mission I'm running here is um, it's actually the caves free mission, so there, there is no real objective for this, it's just get through the caves and kill the boss at the end. Um, with this mission, um, it takes place in a place called Amduskia, which is just a huge cavern network, and there is another area um, in Amduskia as well, which is above this, it's like these floating islands, which are pretty cool, I might show those off in another video. But this, obviously, it's very reminiscent of caves from the original PSR. Um, there are again environmental hazards such as the lava over there, you can actually run in that and it will do damage over time and burn you. And we've got these flame geysers as well which erupt every so often and will burn you and send you flying if you get hit by them. 
There's also um, stalactites that can drop from the ceiling, try impaling you. As you can see in the distance there, you can see some numbers. That's actually because this mission's a multi-party zone, um, so there is actually another party here. So again, we've got one of these turrets which we can use to kill enemies with. And contrary to the last video, I am playing on hard difficulty on this, so the monsters are a little bit higher level. Another thing you have to watch out for in caves is these black doors. Sometimes they'll close off and they can send you flying if you get hit by them. Um, but they actually trigger an emergency code called elimination. It might trigger when I run through, we'll see. No, in that instance it looks like it wasn't a code. If you're wondering why there's no enemies at the minute, it's probably because the other party has probably killed a lot of them and we're waiting for respawns. Just a quick thing to note that I haven't covered in my other videos, um, there are different races you can play in the game. Um, there are humans, there's Newmans, which are, um, to anyone not familiar with Fantasy Star are the game's elves. And then you've got casts, which is what I'm playing with now, which are robots. So it looks like we have finally got an enemy. The enemies here are all weak to ice for the most part. Um, they're all, for the most part, dragon enemies. Like, these guys have a shield and they actually block some of my attacks. So as you can see, the rifle doesn't do too much damage individual shot, but it fires a lot of bullets. I will just say that normally there is a lot more enemies in that block. It's just, I think it's just because there is another multi-party here that's got there before me. So as you can see, the second block is a bit different. It's actually open air. Uh, we still have the same hazards as normal though. You can see that the game does encourage you to jump around to explore the full extent of the levels. And I've got a feeling here that these doors might shut. Yeah. So this is the code elimination. As you can see, we've got some enemies marked on the map and we have to kill seven enemies in ten minutes. They're very easy codes, but they're just there to hinder your progress and just slow you down a bit. And as you can see, you can fire while you're in the air as well. So as I've mentioned, this rifle is actually a rare one, so that there are rare items in the game to hunt. Um, they drop as, as like PSO, they drop like red boxes on the floor. Um, from my own experience with the game, the rare items are actually fairly rare. You'll, there'll be a couple of items that you'll find fairly regularly that are quite low end. But for anything that's any good, you probably will be hunting for them for quite a while because the drop rate is them quite low. And as you can see, the range of dodge mechanic is like a forward roll. As you can see, he was blocking some of my bullet there with a the shield. They actually have a mechanic where if you use a melee weapon on them and they block your attack, they can actually parry you. So as you can see there, I took a little bit of damage when I jumped in the lava. 
I really do think the lava should do more damage, to be honest, it doesn't really feel like a hazard at the moment. So after all that, that was actually a dead end. As I've mentioned in the previous video, there are a huge variety of emergency codes in the game. Um, eliminations are only in certain areas. Um, Caves has them with those doors, and there's um, one or two other areas that have them as well. One thing I didn't cover actually in my previous video is another type of mission that I forgot to mention. There's actually emergency missions in the game. What they are is, every so often the announcer will announce that they're preparing for a large scale operation. And 15 minutes after that, an emergency mission will start. I think at the moment they last for about half an hour. And for half an hour there'll be like a new mission on the um, quest list. The emergency missions are usually timed ones with loads of enemies in them. And this is another emergency code actually. Um, this one is a collect code by the looks of things. Um, collect codes, just as the name suggests, require you to collect a lot of items and return them to this blue triangle and the NPC on the left there that you saw pop up she actually tells you the coordinates of where the items are. I won't actually complete this code because they do waste a lot of time um, trying to find all the items. But yeah, as I was saying um, the emergency codes they are usually timed, the emergency missions are usually timed and there's, there is an objective with them, it's usually just to get through and defeat a boss or defeat a certain amount of enemies in the time limit. But they're absolutely frantic and they're all multi-party zones as well, so generally you'll find in those that a lot of people will run them and you'll get some huge multi-party areas. So we are coming to the end of this block now and we've got another emergency code there which is actually, like I mentioned in the previous video, has actually spawned a boss. And this guy's called Catadran, and he's basically you a dragon enemy that can extend. Um, he's usually not too bad. Um, he is more of a sub-boss really than anything else, but this will be a good place for me to show off Weak Bullet. So I load Weak Bullet in, wait for him to jump off, then I lock onto his tail and shoot it. And as you can see, he's got like a red tag on his tail. And then if I hit his tail now, if he lets me. As you can see, I'm doing massive amounts of damage to it. I'm doing over a thousand damage. One thing I will say is that, um, you may have noticed this, but Classes that are not Force can't use Recovery Magic, or can't use Magic at all unless you have a subclass as Force. So... Because of this, the only way I can heal is by actually using Recovery Items. Um, recovery Items in this as well are not like Fantasy Star Online. In that game, you could use them and they would use instantly. But in Fantasy Star Online too, there is a delay with them, so it's usually better to actually run away from the enemies first and then use a Recovery Item. And the recovery gets longer, the better the healing item is. But obviously the more it heals you by. So with this guy with Katadran, there's a few ways you can take him out. But um, the way I'm doing it is, you can attack his, his crystal tail. And when you've done so much damage to it, it'll actually shatter. And then it'll take a lot more damage. You may also notice that when he jumps, he has those like little orange bits in between him. Those are actually weak points, so it does take more damage if you hit those. You do have to dodge quite a lot with this boss. So all, effectively all I'm doing at the moment is just using weak bullet when it's available and just trying to hit his tail with it and then yeah. and use the sniper bullet to do a lot of damage to it. I can use the other thing as well, like there, I've shattered his tail now, as you can see, it's um, open like a weak point on his tail, so now if I hit that I'll do a lot more damage. Yeah, 
yeah, as you can see, my damage now with Weak Bullet has gone from just under 2,000 to just under 3,000. And even my normal shots are doing like hundreds of damage now. Like, like I say, I think Weak, Weak Bullet does need a little bit of a rebalance. I think it is a bit too good at the moment. So for the most part, this boss isn't too hard. Um, but as I've said, he is actually a sub-boss and when you're fighting in, in his normal mission, you can actually fight more than one of him at the same time. The funny thing here is we've actually run into this guy just before the door to the next block and the next block is actually the boss of the main mission. So we are going to be fighting two bosses in a row. So I am having to heal up a little bit because this guy is quite near to my level. I think this guy should be about dead soon. I don't think he's got much more health left. So again, just continually using weak bullet on his tail whenever it's available. And then just trying to hit him with the sniper bullet. I'm using rifle against this guy because I don't really think that grenade launch is a very good weapon to use against them. Um, rifle seems to be a lot more useful for taking that particular boss out. So we've managed to kill that boss and he'll, as other bosses have covered, will drop a red crystal which has his drops in. So this guy unfortunately is only dropped money. You can get rares from the bosses but like, like I've mentioned previously they are extremely difficult to get for the most part. So we're now hit to block 3. And as you can see, block 3 is just a boss portal. Um, like the previous video, this will just lead to a boss fight. The boss of this area is called Bowl Dragon. Um, he's a huge dragon who just keeps his burrowing under the ground and he gets progressively more armour as he burrows underground and loses his weak points the more he does it. Um, he primarily uses like a lot of fire based attacks. He, he can be quite a tough boss sometimes, so we'll see what happens. So what I'll do is I'll load weak bullet in before I actually enter the portal. So that's Vol Dragon. And what I'm actually going to do here is use the mouse in conjunction with my pad. So with the mouse I can actually use my manual air. And what I want to do on this fight is actually hit his horn on his head if I can. 
because that's actually a weak point. There's also the crystal on his tail, which if you destroy that, he actually has to dig it into the ground and regenerate it. So as you can see there, he's developed more armour. Obviously watch out for his tail as well. He is an extremely aggressive boss. I have to say, I think this is probably my favourite boss fight in the entire game so far. Because it's just really frantic. So what I'm going to do now is, because he's been in this form for a while, I'll start focusing on his tail. Like I mentioned, if I break his tail, he'll actually have to regenerate it. Um, which actually makes him really vulnerable for a bit. And also, if I break his tail, it'll reset him to his first form, which is the least dangerous. The only downside is his tail can be a bit awkward to hit sometimes. So he's actually dug underground, so this is going to show his final form up. So in this form he has no weaknesses whatsoever. He's also even more aggressive. So all we'll do is, because I can't focus on his horn, he's lost that weakness, just focus on his tail. As you can see, he's doing a lot more of the fire jet. One thing I haven't mentioned actually is how nice the game looks. I mean, I'm only playing this at my low resolution so I can, so I can actually record it at a decent level. But the game does look very, very nice. So as you can see there, he's actually collapsed, which allows us to run out of his wings and hit his other weak point. Unfortunately, I had to recover there, so I didn't really have a chance to really capitalise on it. Then while he's regenerating his tail, we just focus on his head again. So he's now regenerated his tail, so he's back to stage one, like how the fight started. So that's the basic tactic really for Fall Dragon. So again, he's dug underground, he'll come up with a bit more armour. You really do need to watch out for that fireball, it does an absolute ton of damage. By breaking his tail as well, it also stops him from using one of his um, biggest attacks. He has an attack which I call it Mega Flare because it just it looks like something that from Final Fantasy. Uh, but it's extremely damaging attack if he does it. Um, it has killed me a few times. But by breaking his tail, it prevents him from going to that stage, so he can't actually use that attack to break his tail. But there is an element of tactics about the bosses, it's not just beat up on them. There is actually another mechanic with Ball Dragon as well, where if you're playing a force, you can actually freeze his legs to the ground, which prevents him from taking off or doing any of his attacks for a bit, because he has to focus on freeing his legs. Which again, I just think that's really cool that they've gone into this much detail in the boss fight.
there was a bit of a joke actually about this guy. Um, if you listen carefully, he does actually talk a little bit. So there was obvious references made to the dragons from Skyrim. You might have heard him there. I don't know if you could, but he actually started screaming there when he did that attack, which I failed horribly at dungeon. I'm just going to pull him over into the open a little bit more because I really don't like being in a corner with him. Right, so this is the Mega Flare attack I was on about because I haven't managed to break his tail in time. Thankfully I was able to dodge that. The downside of the attack for him though is that it uses so much of his energy that he loses all of his armor, so it resets him to stage 1. So it's basically a case of do you want to break his tail to reset him to stage 1 or get him to do it for you. At the expense of him having to use that attack. So I've broke his tail again there, so as you can see he's uh, otherwise preoccupied. I'm going to use Wig Bullet again, and he pops on his face. The downside of Wig Bullet is it does replace your standard shot, so I can't really recover my PP very well while I've got Wig Bullet active. If you watched the previous video, the boss I fought in that was more of a stunt boss and it was on a lower difficulty as well, which is why the fight was much quicker. And um, in this one, this is the main boss of caves. It does go past a lot faster because these missions are designed really to go with a few people. So it is a much faster fight when you've got other people, but obviously I'm just solo in this campaign. I'm just going to briefly switch to grenade launcher because he has spawned some enemies which will get in the way, so I'm just going to use grenade launcher to kill those. Obviously, you have to watch out for the old dragon, no while I'm killing them. Right, so that's all of his additional spawn dead, so now I can focus back on the old dragon. I just think it's easier sometimes to take care of the small monsters so they're not getting in the way. The only thing is, because I'm solo and he's focusing his attention on me, so it's quite hard to actually get to the tail sometimes.
for this attack it's usually just best to just avoid attacking him for a while. Um, because he creates so many of those fire gazes that it's just not worth trying to attack him most of the time. Again, he's going for his second pass. And unfortunately, it actually hit me. So, a bit disappointing. I don't normally get hit by that, but that's how these codes go sometimes. So, I suppose this is actually a good um, opportunity to show you how the death mechanic works. When you die, your mag does have a chance of reviving you, um, or you can just wait for other party members to revive you instead. Um, you can return to the camp ship, go and stop on supplies and come back. Or you can buy these things called scape dolls, which automatically revive you when you die. The downside of those though is, if you, you might be able to see it, the little red A symbol next to the scape doll, that means it's an Arx cash item, so it is a cash shop item to buy those. Um, or there's a chat option, so you can basically hound your teammates to revive you. So what I'll do is I'm not going to continue with this because it will be quite a long boss fight. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just return to the camp ship for now. And that actually ends the mission because I was the only one in the party. So then I can just stock up on my items again. just sell anything unwanted that I don't need. And what we'll do is we'll go back to the main ship. I didn't show this in my previous video so what I'll do is I'll give you a quick tour of the Ark ship. I can't believe I got beat by that dragon. It doesn't normally happen. So this is your main ship area. Um, over here you've got your quest counter, which is where you actually start your missions from. And through that gate there is where I've just come from, the camp ship. And there's another identical counter there. You've got NPCs walking around. If they've got these blue chat bubbles above their head, it means they've got some client orders for you. Client orders are basically sort of mini quests you can do while you're running other quests. So this guy, for example, if I selected him, he would want me to kill certain enemies. And you've got a lift to the shop area, which I'll cover in a minute more NPCs. You've got a medical centre over here, that functions the same as the drink station on the camp ship. Over here you've got um, this counter here is this NPC here gives you titles for completing certain tasks. I suppose they're kind of like achievements. Um, this guy here is actually for your skill trees and you can also change your class from here so you're not limited to the class you select at character creation so I could change these other classes if I wanted to. Um, and then you've got your skill trees so this is the ranger skill tree and obviously like many other online games your level is up by leveling certain skills and the lock symbols mean that you have to level the previous skill to a certain level. So for example, <coughs> for this skill here, which is weak bullet, to unlock that you need to have got this skill here, weak hit advance one to level five to unlock that. And you just you just work your way down skills. You'll notice there's a lot of skills I haven't unlocked, that's because there really isn't enough points in the game to unlock everything. At least not at this stage anyway, because at the moment the level cap's 50. Um, so what you tend to do is really just decide on what you're going to do with your skill tree beforehand. So in my skill tree I've focused on like weak bullet and weak hit advance, which increases the damage of my hits when I hit something that's got weak bullet on it. 
So what we'll do is, because we've got one skill point to spare, you get one skill point every time you level up. We'll use it on weak hit advance 2 to go to level 10. So that's now level 10. And that's basically how the skill trees work. Um, this NPC here is to do with team orders. Um, you can make teams on this and you can get team benefits such as your own team room where you can hang out with your friends there. Um, team orders you just get from this NPC here and you just collect team points to unlock things. I will mention there is actually um, your own private room as well on this that you have, but again it's another cash shop item that you need to unlock. And there's the Ewok guys again. So this is your basic shop district, um, you've got your weapon shop, this is your grinding shop where you do have a grinding mechanic in the game where you can improve your weapons, you can fail grinds in this but Contrary to how it was in Fantasy Star Universe, where you would actually lose the weapon if you had failed to grind um, originally. In this, it might just um, fall off your grinds if it fails, so there's no actual risk of losing your weapon, which is good. And then this NPC here on the right is your Tekka, which you might, if you've played Fantasy Star Online, you might know what the Tekka is. Basically, if you get a rare weapon, sometimes it'll be, it'll just be called a special weapon and it'll be unidentified. So you take it to her and she'll identify it for you and show you what abilities it has. I suppose another similar thing to it would be if you've played the um, if you've played Diablo 2, um, she basically functions as a scroll of identify. So you've got a big screen there that shows all sorts of information. It shows the trailer for the game. At the minute, it's showing the trailer for the for the update that's just released recently. Uh, over here you've got um, the My Room shop, which is where you buy all your room goods from. And then this is the... There's a few shops here. You've got one shop here, which you actually trade medals for items. And you get medals for... As far as my way, you get them for... Coming first, second or third in an interrupt ranking. Interrupt rankings are just like random events that happen that get announced every so often. Where you have to kill certain enemies. Um, and whoever kills the most gets like a little reward. I think that's how you get the medals, but I may be wrong. This NPC in the middle allows you to trade in outfits for certain items. So you can trade in, for example, 14 outfits there to get a colour change ticket. So you can change the colour of an outfit to like a custom colour. And then this NPC here is for um, net cafes. So doesn't really, um, not really applicable to us. But uh, if you're in Japan, you're in a net cafe. You can get some extra items there. I touched on it briefly just then um, about the outfits, but there is machines like this one here, and um, they're actually what they call scratch machines, basically like scratch cards. And yes, they do cost Alex cash to use, apart from the fun scratch. Fun is like another currency that's in the game that you get some fun points whenever you get Arx Cash, but you also get it daily for logging in. Um, so that is effectively like a free scratch, but obviously the items that are in it are nowhere near as good. Um, but yeah, these scratch cards basically, I'll show you a fun one briefly. Yeah, they cost 100 funny use. And you basically have three scratch card slots you can choose from, so you choose one open it up and you get an item. So I've like, received like that gothic sofa, which would be good if I could access my room. So as you can see, uh, I am obviously a bit frustrated with the cash shop. I think it is far too extensive, to be honest. Um, but I have, I've covered that in a previous video, so I'm not going to go on about that again. <laughs> One thing to note actually is that the NPCs give you a huge variety of client orders. I, that guy there with the blue thing above his head, he actually gives you client orders for observing different weather conditions. So then up here, you've got a makeup shop, which is where you can go into the character creation and basically adjust loads of different things. I'll show that briefly. So as I've mentioned, there is a massive character creation in this game. Um, everything here is customizable. 
anything with a red A next to it costs like cash to change, but when you first create the character you can adjust all this for free. It's just that after you've made it, if you want to make further changes, you need to pay for it. So you've got things like your base type, um, you can adjust the eye styles. So for example, you can see loads of different eye styles. My character's eyes look a bit weird because she's a cast, so she's got robotic eyes. There's head parts, which for characters that aren't cast is basically just hairstyles. So you have got loads of different hairstyles. Quite a big variety of them, really. And you can change the colour as well. There's um, actually more in depth there where you can adjust individual bits of the face, but they all cost arts cash at the moment. I may do a video on the character creation at some point. You can change your parts. At the minute I've just got this set with me so I can't actually show that off, but you can change cast parts, which would be clothes for other characters. And then here you've got body adjustments. Um, so you've got like height, the general proportion I suppose that is. There is actually a bust size slider, so you, if, if you're into that thing you can adjust that. And you can just arm length, leg length, um, colours. I can't select the colours at the moment because I don't have the colour change ticket. And um, there's accessories that you can add, so things like you can give them glasses. Um, there's hats. Obviously, as it's a Japanese game, cat ears. You can also give them like robotic looking ears. Obviously, some of these options are only for robots the robot race and there's like the stickers you can choose as well so if you look there I've got like a sticker on the back and I can change that and for cast as well you can actually choose the motion type so I've got my character just running but if I wanted to I could actually have my characters floating along as well I actually prefer the running though I think the, the floating looks a bit awkward but yeah that's the character creation in a nutshell it is extremely in-depth, you can pretty much make exactly what you want. As you can see in the middle we've got there's a huge tree at the minute. Um, that in the middle actually changes depending on the time of year. So at the moment we're celebrating it's like an autumn festival. So we've got obviously autumn with like falling leaves. And I believe, I've been told that the moon with the rabbit on it is actually some kind of Japanese folk tale. I'm not familiar with that myself, but that's apparently the reason that's there. But it'll change throughout the year. I imagine soon it'll change to Halloween and obviously things like Christmas and so on. And like prior to that we did have a summer one, which was a rappy on a surfboard, which looked quite cool. So as you can see there, we've got the screens as well again, and at the minute that's actually advertising another game called Border Break Union. Um, there are actually advertisements for other games that Sega makes. Like, prior to that there was a Hatsune Miku game that was advertised. So I think that's about it for this video. Um, in the next video I'll probably show off the Hunter class or the Fighter class and show how that works. But I think that's a pretty much a brief overview of Ranger, even if the run wasn't very successful. Um, hopefully that's been a bit informative to anyone who's considering having a look at the game. Right, if you've got any comments just leave them below and thanks for watching.